Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over local outlier factor. So this is a follow on from the last outlier video, and this is a more advanced concept here. So we're using K nearest neighbors along with a unsupervised learning algorithm to um, find a local outlier factor. So that's an outlier in a neighborhood. So instead of looking at the whole distribution, we're looking at certain neighborhoods and we're going to see in um, comparison to the nearest neighbors are certain points outliers and in order to demonstrate this fact I've created a dummy data set here um, and I'm using bank charges and uh, amounts that have gone through the bank essentially right so what I'm doing here is I have first data set I'm creating which is a thousand observations is going to be a a normal distribution of bank charges so what I'm going to do is I'm have a few lists here and I'm picking a random amount from this list here so this will give me three neighborhoods so you've got neighborhoods where the amount is a thousand two thousand three thousand I'm just multiplying that figure by 0.95 2.105 just randomly in order to just give a bit of a uh, bit of noise within that neighborhood then I'm going to take a, the amount and multiply it by four percent and again random uniform uh, 0.95 to 105 just to give a bit of noise there in the charge amount so that's going to be essentially um observations of 1000 2000 3000 in and around multiplied by four percent then i'm going to introduce some outliers so this is just demonstrating this how this local outlier factor works and can we find these 10 observations which are going to be outliers so again i'm taking the amounts 1000 2000 3000 random choice multiplied by random uniform but instead of before where I've taken a 4% bank charge, I'm taking a random bank charge, 1%, 8%, and 12%. And this is just to see if we can find these amounts uh, when we put the local outlier factor algorithm in. And how the local outlier factor algorithm works is that it'll look at your nearest neighbors. And if you're not an outlier, the value will be in and around 1%. 1.2 1.3 maybe but if you are an outlier it's going to be much higher than that so what we'll do is make this data set now and um, we'll just play this and this will make the data set and these are my normal observations 10 normal observations here so you can see and um, with this i've got this is in and around 3000 the amount and this is in and around four percent this is in and around 2000 this is in and around four percent of that and so on and so forth that would be part of my first um, four statement here, which created a thousand observations, which are my normal observations. I'm gonna look at the tail of the data set, which would be these 10 uh, here. And you can see these are all a, a good bit different. So we've got, this is, if you look at this, this is in and around 1% here. And then this one would be, what's this? This is, in and around uh, 12 percent here so you can see the difference here these are both in the 3000 neighborhood which should be around 120 but i've got a 27 euros and i've got a nearly 400 euro here bank charge so obviously these are going to be outliers in the data set so now we're going to apply the algorithm and first thing we're going to do is we're going to import local outlier factor from sklearn.neighbors and then we're going to create a local outlier factor object with neighbors equals to 30 then we're going to normalize the data set just to bring the charges and the amounts onto the same scale. So nothing is dominating uh, the distance calculation for this uh, local outlier factor. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the, um, the local outlier factor to the normalized DF. This will then give us the local outlier factor number for each observation. And I'm going to add this. Um, I'm going to add this to the list so it's going to have the, this list here is going to have another data point here which is the local outlier factor and then i'm just going to add the percentage as well to the list so we can see what that is so it's going to run this now and as i said the local outlier factor should be in and around 1.1 1 1.2 and it's an it's a negative value so i'm just looking for anything over 1.5 here and i've got some normal observations that are in and around 1.5 but not that not that much of an outlier so i've got a few 1.5s 1.7 in here and you can see this is kind of a, a large value 
um, this would be much closer to the 105 here. So if I go back up here, we've got, we've picked 3000 and that's very close to the 105. So you can see um, that that's an outlier here. And then the charge as well is, is high enough. So it would be over 4% here. So that's, that's an outlier. But you can see my 10 outliers here from up here are super high values here. So compared to the top outliers from my thousand data set, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven over the 1.5. And, but they're just barely over the 1.5, but all the outliers I've created are like 40, 70. They're all over, they're all over tw at least 20, right? So you can see that these are, are major outliers here. And this is how you look at a data set. You take a couple of um, dimensions and then see, is anything gonna be over 1.5 is there aren't going to be two and then looking to see if those are um outliers and they need to be taken out of the data set so just going to do a graph here just to show you um how this looks overall and what i'm going to do here is i have a scatter plot but what i'm going to do is i am going to use um the lof as the size of my data point so you can see you're going to be able to see the outliers are going to be much larger in this graph um than they uh than the other data points would be so you can see this is my thousand data set this is my two thousand data set my three thousand data set this is essentially a thousand observations here but they're all quite small um because the lof value isn't that big you can see that most of the outliers are here in the 3000 uh, data set here and that's why this is slightly a little bit larger and bigger but these are my outliers i put into the data set and you can see how large these are and you can see how far they are away from the neighborhood so if you look at around here i've got my 1000 normal observations they're all bunched in here they're in and around four percent you got your 2,000 in and around 4%, you got your 3,000 in and around 4%, and this is about 1,000 observations here, and then you've got the big dots, which are my outliers. So I've got two outliers on the 1,000, I've got three outliers on the 2,000, and I have got four outliers in there on the 3,000. I think there's another outlier hiding behind one of these. So let's see here, 3,000. There's two there. So I think there's an outlier There's an outlier hiding behind one of these. So there should be three here, three here, and four here. So this can be used in a lot of different contexts. We've used amounts and bank charges today, but you could see this could be cross-transferable into, say, different age groups of sports looking at outliers. Say you wanted to look at sprinting over a number of different uh, age ranges or true genders or different groups of people, different local neighborhoods. Are people an outlier compared to their age bracket? Are people an outlier compared to their country? Are people an outlier compared to their peers? You know, if you were looking at somebody's income, maybe I'm an outlier compared to people working in the public sector. But maybe when I have other people working in the same field as me, I'm not an outlier. And then in that local area, what are the outliers? So when you're looking at big data sets, I think this becomes very useful to look at local outliers rather than taking every, every observation in a data set under the same set of criteria and trying to find outliers that way. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I'll be posting more videos on outlier detection in the future. And keep it glued on Super Data World for more Python videos coming up very soon.